it's Nancy again. Um, here's my second video. Uh, I've, in the intervening time between when I did my last one and this one, I've learned how to edit at kindergarten level. Um, I've learned how to do a couple of things and I've actually uploaded a video. So um, I'm a bit excited about that because I'm usually not that technically savvy. So um, I did go through it and a couple of things I did notice is I hadn't realized how much I put my head in my hands like this or this. So I'm gonna try not to do that today. Um, I'm not so sure about this camera angle. Um, I have tested out trying to a video in other parts of my house, but my house is an absolute mess and I'm not sure I want to show everybody what a mess my house is. So at least here you can see the door, there's some sunshine out there um, and you can see one slightly messy shelf, but that's okay. Um, the other thing I did realise, I hadn't said where I am living. Um, so I live in Adelaide in Australia. Uh, you could probably tell my by my accent that I was Australian, but um, yep, uh, it's currently the beginning of April here. So we're just going into autumn. It's actually quite warm today, um, but the weather will be getting colder. I live in the hills, so it does get quite cold. I don't like the cold very much. Um, I'm much more of a hot weather person, but you know, is what it is um so yeah so that's a little bit more about me now what i want to do today is i've actually gathered together a few of my whips i've pulled out my heaven and earth designs whips and i've pulled out my mirabilia whips Now, there's not as many as i thought i had although i do have a lot of other projects um so i thought i'd go through these ones today there's only eight so the video shouldn't be too long um, and um, then we'll see how we go from there. Okay, so I'll start with the Nora Corbett um, slash Mirabilia whips. So my first one, um, I hunted around and I couldn't actually find the cover. Um, so I can't like hold the picture up, but now with my amazing video editing prowess, I'm actually going to work out how to drop a picture here so you can see. So it is Xenia, the witch Xenia, and I have stitched her on a piece of fabric from Stitchery Express called Witch's Sky. There she is. So she's looking gorgeous. Let's see whether I can get her. There we are. Now, I started her um, during the COVID lockdown in 2020. Um, so that was back um, before I um, separated from my husband. So there was still somebody else around to help out with the kids. Um, I did get a lot more stitching done then, strangely enough. Um, it's not so easy now. Um, but this lovely piece of that fabric is a 32 count even weave and you can see it's quite dramatic the uh, the sky is quite dramatic i actually haven't got a lot on her to go um so i probably should pull her out and see whether i could get her finished okay um i love all of nora corbett's stuff i love mirabilia um i've been on several mirabilia weekends and in fact um i do have a couple of um uh, special projects from Mirabilia Weekends. So uh, Nora Corbett came here to Australia and uh, we had the pleasure of stitching with her. I haven't been able to go on one of those for a couple of years, unfortunately. Um, they have started them again, but they are over in the Eastern States and it's a little bit too much for me to be flying over there and spending a weekend stitching, but that's okay. It'll happen one day. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, the next one, which is uh, and Nora Corbett is, it's actually, this is the first one, sorry, I've still got it in plastic. It's called um, Partridge in a Pear Tree and it's the first of the 12 days of Christmas. So being the ambitious person that I am, I decided that I was gonna stitch all 12 of them on one piece of fabric. So what I've done 
is, let me take it out of here. I have a little project bag for this one. Uh, is I have started the partridge in a pear tree. There. Okay. In the top right corner of a particularly large piece of fabric. It's very large. Um, with the goal of fitting all 12 of them in. And actually, while I was doing that, I thought, oh, well, if I can do all 12 of the 12 of her 12 days of Christmas, then of course I can do all of the reindeers, which I have. And then I thought, oh, I could do all of the letters by Nora. I haven't got all of those yet, but um, these would be huge projects, but yeah, why not? Okay, so that's that one. So the next one, and again, I can't show you a coloured picture of it because this is one of her um, uh, free downloads from her website. Um, I believe it's free. I think it was free. I can't remember. So I can't show you because I've only got the graph. Um, but again, I'll drop a picture of what she looks like. This is Leilani, the hula dancer. Now, I haven't done very much. I started this during stitch mania uh, I think a couple of years ago and at that stitch mania my goal was every second day I would do a new start and every other day I would work on a work in progress um, so I haven't got a lot of her done this is just the start pretty sure oh no that's upside down that's the way it goes just looking at my chart here now that is done with water lilies Karen water lilies I have all of those water lilies here um, beautiful silks they're absolutely gorgeous to stitch with um, I've got all the beads I've got everything all set up ready to go she's only quite small so that's another quick win as I say so um, I should um, pull her out and get her get her finished she's not very large so gorgeous of course okay so that's her now the next one I actually picked this one up as a kit um, when I was still living in the UK and it was one of those just wonderful serendipitous moments um, where I was wandering around a charity shop and I found a bag which had this kit as well as a couple of other mirabilia charts in it and you know when you're looking at a thrift shop or a charity shop we call them op shops here in australia and you find something like this and you sort of start to go oh my god it was five pounds that was all for this entire kit it's angel's proclamation there we are it's this one and it had been kitted by Victoria's Needle and it had everything included, including all the chart. Now it had a piece of Ada fabric, which I did start on the Ada fabric. However, um, I started at my first Mirabilia retreat and it didn't take me too long before I started to discover the joys of pearlescent, opalescent. So you can't really see this on the camera, but this has got a gorgeous sparkle to it. So what I did is I restarted it. I mean, I'd only just started, but I restarted. I bought this beautiful piece of sparkly fabric. Um, it is a 28 count linen, opalescent. And that's where I've got to so far with that. I think it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous with the sparkle in the background. Again, fairly big piece of fabric. Um, but yeah, I had all of the threads, uh, everything came in the kit, including the fluffy whisper um, thread as well. Um, so yeah, that was one of those incredibly lucky moments. They don't happen very often, but uh, you, you feel pretty, pretty lucky when they do. Okay, so that's Angel's Proclamation. And then the last Mirabilia that I started, and again, I started this one in um, Stitch Mania. So this was one of my uh, new starts, that Stitch Mania. I'm pretty sure, I don't think it was 2020, 
two, it was definitely 2021, it was 2021. Now, I um, have been collecting Mirabilia's for a while. I've got an enormous box of them. And I wanted to collect like the first 50 because a lot of them are out of print. And then my, my plan, this is another one of my ambitious plans, was to start at the beginning, stitch the first one and work all the way through the first 50. So this is number one. Uh, this is, uh, oh gosh, what's the name of it? Damask Roses, there we are. So that's the first, that's her first one. Okay, so we started her. Uh, this is on a piece of 32 count oatmeal linen. I haven't done very much, as you can see. All I've really started is the book. So I haven't done a lot on that. But it's a start, it's a start. So I will put that in as a whip, so, okay. So that's my my mirrors. Right, now my heaven and earth. Now I have actually only started four heaven and earth. So that's not too bad. And I haven't really got very far on them. Obviously in my first video, I was talking about the Scarlet Quince that I started for coverage. So um, these are the four that I've begun. Now the first one, everybody will know this one. This is... Old world map okay which I just love and I've seen it stitched completed um, on Facebook groups and it just looks fantastic I just love how like the wording so even the text you know around here with the actual map and the words etc you don't you can't see it on the chart but then when it's stitched it actually it suddenly appears it's amazing so I have done a little bit on this, not a huge amount, but uh, a little bit. And you'll see also that I've chopped and changed about how I'm doing it. So I started off oh, a couple of cute little needle minders here. So as you can see, I started off in the top right hand corner and I started um, doing 10 by 10 squares with parking. And then I tried moving along and saw how that went and then I thought oh, I'll give a go of extreme cross country per page a go so you can see that I moved to the next page and did some extreme cross country let's move my little needle minder out of the way there we are um so I've done a little bit there uh, I've got threads still hanging so this is done on a 25 count one over one okay so I haven't done too badly on it, I have to say, but uh, I should get back to that one. Okay, so that's Old World Map. All right, now the next Heaven and Earth that I have is actually in 2017, they did a mystery stitch along. Um, and so I haven't got a picture of the complete thing but I have actually got halfway through it's a sampler so it's not a full coverage it's a, it's just a heaven and earth sampler um so here we are this is how much I've done on this one as you can see let's see if I can get it all in there we go okay so yeah, I, I really got going on that one. Now I've done that on a piece of Lugana. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a 25 count Lugana, kind of uh, off-white color. And it's really only done, it's got a very muted um, palette. I bought the kit um, from Heaven and Earth. So you can see that's the, that's the color range. That's all we've got. We've got one um, thread gatherer silk and the rest of it are DMC. So there's not a huge number of colors for a heaven and earth, um, but uh, but it, it is lovely. It's a really nice one. And there's something nice about, you know, just doing these motifs in single colors. Um, it means you can kind of just get on and stitch. So, so yeah, luckily there is a, as you can see, let's go back to that. There's a gap in the top where you're supposed to put the date. Lucky I didn't put the date at the time because that needs to go for when I finished, <laughs> not when I started. Okay, so that's 
that whip. That's another one. Okay. Now, this one is one that I purchased um, off a Facebook group. Uh, it's um, oh, it's a bit hard to see that because there we go. That is uh, Computer Wizard by Randall Spangler. Okay, and it is one that I thought I'd give Extreme Cross Country a go. And the reason being is because there is a lot of black. So I thought, oh, look, I'll, I'll give it a try. Now, this is done on 25 count, easy, easy count. Okay, so I started off with Extreme Cross Country. Obviously, I've only got the paper chart. Um, so this is all being done on paper. Where are we? Yep. So, um, but I'm not um yeah, I'm not I'm not convinced about extreme cross country. I'm not sure I'm gonna keep going with that. I think I'll probably switch to starting to work pages, see how my diagonal goes. So um so yeah. So that's that one. And then the last heaven and earth, which I have started. So when my daughter was little, uh, when she was only about two or three, she's now nine, um, she fell in love with the poem of the, uh, the Owl and the Pussycat. We used to read that and we loved the story of the Owl and the Pussycat. So, of course, I was like, oh, I'll stitch her an Owl and the Pussycat. So I remember going on to the Heaven and Earth site and I found two that I really liked and I ended up buying both of them. And I started this one. It's by Yvonne Gilbert. It's Owl and the Pussycat. There we go. And what I love about it is the border on the outside, the, the shells and the, um, and the sand, etc. I think it's gorgeous. So, again, I haven't got a huge long way because I've been trying out different ways of doing things. But one of the little shells has started to show out. Okay, so you can see I've started trying to do the sawtooth. I've started done a, done a bit of diagonal, done a little bit of cross country. So, so yeah, so that's that one. Okay, so that that's my heaven and earth. So I was surprised because considering I have I have a lot of heaven and earth patterns. I think oh, I don't know if I counted them all up. I probably have fifty, maybe. Maybe less. I don't know. Um, some I've only got in paper. Some I've got digitally. Um, I have, so old world map I have actually got digitally. Um, so I have been using it on the iPad with, um, oh, there's a, a, a PDF program that you can use. It's not perfect. Um, and I actually think I prefer to go back to my paper um, because I'm not, it just, it's, it, it, it it's got flaws to it. So, and I'm also really scared because my iPad's really old now. I'm really scared that if I, for any reason, lose that piece of software or the iPad stops working, I won't know where I am anymore. So at least with paper, I have my paper with me and uh, I think, oh, well, look, I won't lose that. So, so those are my Mirabilia and my Heaven and Earth whips. And, um, yeah, so next time what I will do is I'll try and pull out some of my other cross stitch whips, which are um, uh, probably non full coverage, and um, run through those. Um, thank you again for watching. Uh, I'm that's if anybody's watching. Um, I uh, will keep doing this because now I'm sort of in the swing of it. It's got me back into stitching. It's allowed me to go back and have a look at some of my projects again. Um, I was thinking this morning, I was watching a YouTuber as I was at the gym. Um, and I was thinking, because they had goals of doing like 5,000 stitches on a certain project, etc. And I thought, oh, I can't put goals in like that. I just don't, I just don't have that time to do it. So I thought, well, what I'm going to try and give myself a goal of doing is I'm going to try and do 10 stitches a day. If I can do 10 stitches on any project, it doesn't matter, then I think I'll be doing well. And anything more than 10 stitches is a bonus. If I can only get 10 in, well, that's fine too. So, um, so that's it for now. Um, I will see you next time.
Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.